I'm Jake the Snake Roberts, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'm so excited to be joined by Jake the Snake Roberts today. Hello. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, it's going great, man. We're having a, a great time. I am, and um, seems like it's being received really, really well. Um, business is great, man. Apparently, Sweet. apparently one night you were watching Foley doing something live, and you were mm -hmm. thinking, "I can do this." Well, I actually, I said fun. to myself, "I'm a lot funnier than that." <laughs> was that how it happened? Yeah, it was. It was because I was listening to Mick. I'm like. Jesus, I'm a lot funnier than that, you know, come on. <laughs> uh, but it's unfair because Mick, um, he didn't have as many years as I do to pick up material, you know. I mean, did it for 37 years, so. And I had the snake to pull stuff from, too, so. And other than that, I'm just a much more colorful personality than Mick, you know. I mean, uh. <laughs> Jake the Snake has done a lot of things, and uh, sometimes I have to make sure the statute of limitations is up on stuff, but uh, it usually works out pretty well. <laughs> well, now you are on this tour, and it's another mm -hmm. dream that's come to fruition. So how's mm -hmm. that feel for you? You know, with, with everything that I've been through and with what I've accomplished in the last five years, um, the big things, of course, are getting sober, getting clean, uh, beating cancer, um, pulling my family back together, that's the big one, you know, and uh, I, my grandkids are so magnificent, man, not just because they're mine, but they're just really cool, man, they're just so awesome, and uh, there's a couple of great stories there, you know, I mean, um, we got a granddaughter that had to have five major reconstruction surgeries on her bowels and uh that was at day two of her life it started and um the hospitals had given up on her but uh, mom said no way that's my baby and uh they had adopted her so they were gonna go out and get a new one for them you know it's not like you're trading a car here folks come on and uh, they stuck with it and five surgeries later in seven months she left the hospital uh, one angry little girl I mean, she was very angry, you know, and they've had issues with that. Um, here's a for instance. She's about, I guess, almost three, and a neighborhood dog um, got on her and bit her in the face. Really bad, man. I mean, blood went everywhere. Mom freaked out, um, tried to clean her up, and she pushed Mom off and chased the dog down and bit it back. <laughs> That's my kid, man, uh, because she feels no pain. You, know, you can imagine she was in a hospital, tethered down, yeah. and they were doing all these horrible things to her body, cutting her open, sewing her up, and cutting her open and sewing her up, and pulling in this and pulling that, you know, and she had to endure that. And it's not like they could use a lot of painkillers on her because she was so small. So she just had to weather it. So as far as feel pain, that kid feels no pain. Now here's the real bad news. She wants to wrestle. <laughs> so my God, I'm just warning everybody out there between the ages of uh, two and six, look out. She's coming for you. You might make it two and 10 because she's probably gonna move up pretty quick. <laughs> But uh, no, she, she loves wrestling and um, she loves grandpa, but she, uh, she's getting better. Have you given her a ring name yet? Oh God, no, I wouldn't <laughs> dare. Are you serious? <laughs> Last thing I want to do is piss her off. <laughs> With so many she loves Lita. She thinks Lita's okay. the stuff, man. Well, so many stories about family, time on the road. I believe you called it a road stories tour, pretty much. How yeah, is that's it all it's about. Was That's it difficult for you to narrow down which oh, stories gotcha. you were going to put gotcha. in? You know, in the beginning, I, I was really struggling with it because, um, you know, I've been hit in the head a lot. <laughs> and whether it's the addiction or the things I've done to my body or the headshots, I was struggling to even talk in the beginning. Um, I'm still having problems sometimes speaking, 
But it's because of the headshots. I get that, and I understand. You know, I'm going to have more problems as I get older. But doing these shows has helped me so much because it's got me back out there, got me talking again, got me doing interviews again. Because for so many years, I shut down completely because of my addiction and, and because I was, wasn't working. So to start over again, it's so much fun because it's like right in the middle of a show, I'll go, oh, oh, I, this is a really good one, you know, and, uh, and I just pull up new stuff. Um, in the beginning, I had a hard time coming up with a full show, you know, and that was only like 35 or 40 minutes. Hell, last night I went an hour and a half, and I don't think I breathed. You know, I just, <laughs> just went with it. Time just flew. Yeah, I just flew it. It's so much fun. And um, the more I remember, the more I get, the more I get, the more I remember. And it just seems to flow, and it's sweet. Um, I, I'm so grateful for the fans that attend it because they're helping me get healthy. They really are. And uh, hopefully I'm helping them get healthy. I love how a lot of your promos were very dark, stern. They're very mm -hmm. captivating, and there's such a lightheartedness to comedy. Like, you're mm -hmm. hilarious, especially even just sitting with you today. Like, there's just something... Don't be silly. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> when you were filming some of those older promos, mm -hmm. was it hard for you to stay in that stern character? Or did you no. just want to bust out laughing? No, I, uh, in those days, I didn't laugh a whole lot. Um, I was centered and um, I was angry. I had a lot of hate, a lot of shame, a lot of shame. And shame is such a dangerous thing to mess with, you know. Uh, you know, shame's the, the one thing that you have to put on yourself, you know. Um, and I was just so upset with myself and the way that my life had went, uh, some of the things that had happened to me, sexual abuse and all that. Uh, so it was easy to get dark. I always wanted to cast fear into somebody else because I wanted them to feel the way I felt. So that was pretty easy. I remember being so captivated by you having Damien mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. I had loved that combination, but you were apparently absolutely terrified of I snakes. I can't stand snakes. <laughs> I'm scared to death of damn things. How um, did that even work? There were enough zeros on that contract to make me forget about that fear. <laughs> You know, that's the truth. There were enough zeros to make you go, what snake? I don't see a snake. There's not a snake in there. So we just kind of went with it. It's know? not like it was any snake. It was a pretty big python. So yeah, kudos to you yeah. for that. You know, I, I really wish I'd been smart enough to skip the python and go straight to the cobra. Because the, um, the cobra only weighed about 15 pounds, and it demanded respect. You know, that cobra cast fear in everyone. And he was so easy to work with. Um, they don't have fangs, they have teeth, like a fish's mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, a python that it bites you. And, and this, this kills me when they tell you, well, I remember if it bites you, hold still. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Something bites me, I'm jerking the hell away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so F you, mister. Uh, you know, and, and with the cobra, it could bite you, and if you jerked away, it was okay. If you didn't, it was okay. Um, so I, I just wished I'd done it in the cobra my, many more years earlier, because really carrying that 100 pound snake around was brutal on my body. You know, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning in a hotel and you got your clothes, which is a lot, if you're going to the road for two or three weeks, and you got your wrestling gear, which is another bag. Oh, let's don't forget the steak. There's an extra 100 pounds for you, asshole. So now you head out the door. And once you get out the door, you go to the front desk, you check out of the hotel, you find your rental car, you load it all up, you go to the airport, go to the rental car place, take it all out of the car, carry it to the rental car uh, desk, pick it back up, carry it to the buses, taking you to the airport. Now you go to the airport, you get to the airport. Oh, no sky caps, no problem, walk it all in. So by 5 a.m., I'm already beat up and worn out. 
It was so tough to carry all that stuff, so tough to deal with all that stuff day in and day out. And uh, people have no idea, you know, the aggravation that I put up with. I mean, you got it in your hotel room, and, you know, I know I love all animals, but Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, I gotta put it in my bathroom and and put some water in the tub so it can like get itself wet and, and consume some water. Then you come back, he's gone. Where the hell did he go? I don't know. Look in the toilet, not there. Look up in the ceiling, not there. <laughs> and now you start searching the hotel for it. You know, my God, it gets old. It really did, man. It really did. And. Um, you know, you get to the building, you deal with it again. Not only that, you got a bunch of assholes in the locker room that are doing mean things to it, which is not cool. Um, I had one guy, I won't mention his name, other than Davy Boy Smith, who was a real jerk. And he would, um, I called him lighting cigarettes and putting them inside the bag with the snake. And the snake reacted by biting me several times, which I caught him doing that and being the chicken shit man that he is. I say, man, I didn't mean that. The guy that he is, uh, he ran, and um, that was that. So, you know, um, it was tough, man. It was tough dealing with that stuff, you know. I mean, yeah, okay, sometimes maybe I did ask for it. They retaliated, sure, you know, just because I accidentally dropped a snake over the top of a toilet on top of, top of somebody. That was an accident, trust me. <laughs> Don't you? So after hearing that, for anybody who's looking to do a snake gimmick, do not go with the python. No, don't. don't <laughs> do not. Don't, don't. Be Freddy the Frog <laughs> or Chuck the Cockroach. I mean, if I had a cockroach, I'm like, mm, wouldn't that freak you out? It would. And like put it in your ear. <laughs> huh? Would that, like, ah, man, that would mess me up. I like all these ideas. Mickey, for aspiring how about wrestlers. Mickey the Mouse? Oh, Ooh. that's so cool. Never heard of that before. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, some of your interests that you had listed on your Facebook were cooking, gardening, and of course, DDP yoga. Mm -hmm. So tell me about some of the things that you like to cook. Oh, I, I love to smoke meat, you know, and weed, but I, I like to smoke <laughs> meat. Um, <laughs> nothing like putting a prime rib on the smoker and letting it cook for, you know, eight, ten hours. Uh, I love doing that. I love cooking. I love smoking a turkey. Oh, my God. You, I mean, I, I love turkey, but turkey... Lots of times it turns out dry, you know, the white meat. But if you put it on that in that cooker, man, and you let that thing smoke for seven or eight hours, and you cut it and water just runs out of it, man. It's so moist and so good. I'm getting hungry. Me too. It's just, that's what it's I was about so to say. No, I, I love barbecue. But I You're making love, me think I love of, like, the smoke meats. rings. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, I, like, I like experimenting with different woods, with different uh, injections and stuff, you know. So all those needles I used to use for other things are now used for injecting meat. <laughs> well, just to wrap everything up, is there anything you want to leave with all the wrestling fans who will be viewing our interview? Mm -hmm. Any parting words? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, thanks to the fans out there. Um, the Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts, the movie, you know, the, the documentary. Um, it was real close in the voting, but they finally came up and said that uh, the documentary was the second best resurrection of all time. Almost beat that other guy out. What was his name? Jesus? Yeah, Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Oh, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> second best resurrection of all time. Um, <laughs> It's helped a lot of people, and I just want the fans to continue to reach out to each other, to help each other, to talk about their issues, to talk about their addictions or alcoholisms. Bring it to me. I'll be glad to talk to you about it. I'm serious when I say that. I do the shows on the road. I'm always available after a show to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining yeah, me today. Um, Absolute legend right here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time. Bada bing. <laughs>